So Andy, let's start with that drivetrain failure that you suffered back in 2015. You've made some big changes to rectify that. Can you tell us what you've done? Uh, basically the standard Subaru transmission doesn't cope too well with near on a thousand pound of torque. So we, we looked at a transmission that would do two things for us. One, sort out our centre of gravity, which on a, a normal Subaru is pretty bad, but once you put an H6 engine in, it gets even worse. So one, sort out our centre of gravity, and two, uh, take the load that we're anticipating putting through it. And the, the obvious contender was a Nissan R, a GTR 35. So the R35 transmission is, is quite unique because unlike most transmissions which sit directly off the back of the engine, the R35 transmission is actually a transaxle that sits at the rear of the car, correct? That's correct. It sits in the rear but forward biased, so there's no rear hangover. So you're not bolting a whole load of weight right to the back of the car that would give you an oversteering car. Uh, most of the weight sits within uh, 500, 600 millimetres of the centre of gravity of the car. So with moving the entire weight of the transmission rearward in the car, what's that actually done for the weight distribution? Well that in, in combination with moving the engine back some six, seven hundred millimetres, bolting the engine right back onto the bulkhead, has allowed us to get the car almost 50-50. I think we're about 51-49 at the moment. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. Now, coupled with that, the R35 transmission, uh, it's been well proven uh, all around the world to be capable of supporting uh, 2,000 plus horsepower in a drag application, so uh, clearly more than capable of handling what you're going to throw at it. Yes, it will be. We, we haven't gone as far as a gear set for it yet. We have the um, clutch baskets, uh, uprated clutch plates, all the, the usual bells and whistles that you upgrade on these, um, these GTR engines. A Shep 3.5. So normally recommend them for around about a thousand horsepower. Now, in terms of those transmissions, they're also a dual clutch transmission, uh, which means that they're computer controlled. Essentially, you've got two gear sets, and uh, while you're in first gear, for example, second gear is already engaged, and when you want to shift gear, it simply disengages the clutch for first gear and engages the clutch for second gear, giving very, very fast shifts. But this also requires uh, computer control. So, how's that being handled in your car? We use the original GTR, um, GR6 transmission it's called, uh, the original Nissan TCU transmission control unit and we interface with it using Ecutec software which allows us to then also communicate with the ECU via Canvas system and control our shift points from there, whether you want them automated, whether you want them on the paddle, whether you do or you do, don't want auto up shifts, where your downshift limits are, so you can, can program all that in along with clutch weights, pressures on the clutch plates, how hard you want your shift. The road car, standard GTR road car, shifts almost seamlessly, you don't feel anything. And they do that by pulling the engine torque back, swapping the clutches very gently. We, we do it a bit more harshly, we want it, we're almost mimicking a dog box, but without the dog thump. So we, we don't cut the power, um, we just pull, for, for example, changing from three to four, you're pulling clutch four in quite hard before you let go of clutch three and you do it a lot faster than the, the original transmission does. So it, it's not as smooth, but you don't want smooth on a race car, you want that push forward. So the, the interaction here between the Cyvex and the Nissan TCU or TCM is, is obviously uh, quite important and uh, there's a communication backwards and forwards, so when you request a, a shift, the Nissan TCU will send uh, a torque request through to the Cyvex engine control unit to request a lower torque value and then the Cyvex ECU in turn will cut engine torque uh, to allow the gear change to, to be completed. If you like that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson. You'll learn about performance engine building and EFI tuning, and you'll also have the chance to ask questions which I'll be answering live. Remember, it's 100% free, so follow the link to claim your spot.